What's going on everybody and welcome back to a brand new skill cap video. Today we'll be breaking down the three champions for each role that our analysts believe will provide you with the highest solo carry potential for 11.18. But before we get into it, be sure to check out Skillcapped if you want to truly get better at League of Legends. We're the only service that offers a money back guarantee if you don't climb at least 5 divisions while actively using our service. We do this because our service really does work, and if it doesn't work for you, you shouldn't pay. Learn more at the end of this video, or click the link in the description for a special discount. And without any further ado, let's get right into it. If you guys aren't abusing Ghostblade Riven yet, then hop on the train before everyone finds out. With Camille nerfed this patch, Riven moves up and will be our first solo carry top of 11.18. Many Riven players are sleeping on Ghostblade right now as the item combination of Gore Drinker into Yomu's gives you immense carry threat. The haste addition to Ghostblade is huge for Riven as she wants to stack as much as possible. Gore Drinker provides you with a good chunk of survivability, and then the added mobility and damage from Ghostblade is perfect to pull off those nasty outplays. Since Camille was one of Riven's most common matchups of 11.17, the passive nerf she received is great to give Riven a larger trading window. Renekton and Jace nerfed are the cherry on top, as those are two more annoying matchups that become easier to play. With Urgot buffed in 11.18 and it being one of Riven's more difficult lanes, we would recommend banning him out. Complete build we would recommend you spam right now is Gore into Yomu's and Black Cleaver. Rune Page is standard stuff with Conqueror followed by Triumph, Alacrity, and Last Stand, Pick Up Transcendence, and Gathering Storm for secondaries. A sure bet in our top 3 for top lane over the past while now has been set and nothing changes in that regard for 11.18. The dominoes have started falling as Camille was a staple in our top 3 and just saw a nerf, so we wouldn't be surprised if Set hits the chopping block in the coming patches. For the time being though, Set's only become stronger patch after patch as so many other top lane picks have been nerfed. If you can farm up to your Gore Drinker completion and have the basic mechanics of set locked down, then your 1v1 and even 1v2 potential is massive. On Steric's completion, you become nearly unkillable and can deal a disgusting amount of damage. Round that core build out with a Titanic Hydra 3rd as the synergy it offers with all the health stack is way too good. Matchup wise right now, Riven and Urgot are two picks who most set players are having issues against, so banning one of them out is a good idea. For runes, you can run the cookie cutter conqueror page and be very well off, or look to dabble with the fleet page that was just buffed in 11.17. Fleet set is being played a solid amount of masters and above right now and is a great pickup as it enables you in those quick bursty trades. When it comes down to a consistent, easy to pilot top lane pick in 11.18, there's really nothing that beats the Kench. Even after his nerfs from a few patches back, he continues to dominate the meta and slaps around all the most played champs. It gets even better for Tom in solo queue specifically, as there have been so many champs nerfed in the recent patches. Only matchup that Tom really struggles with right now is the niche Lilia top pick, and with her health regen nerfed in 11.18, it will give Tom some more viability in that lane. Lilia or Shen are good bans at the moment, as most other picks Tom either goes even with or absolutely stomps. Once you complete Frostfire and Anathema's Chains, your 1v1 power is difficult to match. Anathema is providing you with the damage reduction passive and also giving you loads of health synergizes so well with Tom's kit. Rune Page will be grasped with Shield Bash, Second Wind, and Unflinching. Best secondaries are Triumph and Alacrity. Rising from the depths and making his first appearance in our top 3 for jungle is a Mumu. To say the least, buffs last patch have triggered a massive surge in carry power. Two Q charges opens up so many more opportunities that wouldn't have presented themselves before. You can bandage toss onto a minion wave, flash ult the enemy, and then use your second Q charge to chain the CC and allow your team to follow up. Chase potential is amazing now and lets you clean up kills that never would have been possible pre-buff. Early game issues are still present with the Mumu, but if you can buckle down and hit level 6 without falling behind, your ability to impact the game is higher than most junglers. Banning out someone like Jarvin or Shin Zhao who want to be aggressive early on is a good idea so that you can play a more controlled early game. Really strong Amumu build is a Sunfire Rush into Demonic Embrace 2nd and Thornmail 3rd. Solid mix of damage and tankiness. Abyssal Mask is also a great situational item when the enemy comp has heavy AP. Although Aftershock used to be very popular on Amumu, Conqueror has taken over and is seeing the most success. Follow with Triumph, Tenacity, and Last Stand to round out primaries, Cheap Shot and Ravenous Hunter are optimal secondaries. Another jungler moving into our top 3 making his first appearance in months is Echo. Echo is definitely a little less accessible right now due to his higher ban rate, but if you can get your hands on him, he's a monster pick. 
Just like a Moomoo, Moo, Echo is fresh off a buff from 11.17 that has propelled his early clear speed, resulting in a serious boost in strength. Just like a Moomoo, Moo, it's all about making it through that first clear and scaling into the mid-game. Echo's early game isn't anything special, but once you hit your two-item spike, it's game over. A Nasher's Tooth Rush has become increasingly popular over the past while, especially in Korea. Attack speed from Nasher's allows you to annihilate camps and helps to proc your passive so much easier. The damage difference between Nasher's and Lich Bane is very small as well. Nasher's will actually deal more damage as long as you're able to throw in an extra auto attack throughout your rotation. A very underrated setup is Nasher's into Rocket Belt and then grabbing Lich Bane third. It's really the best of both worlds, as you've got nasty burst, but at the same time can deal great consistent damage. For runes, roll with Dark Harvest as the keystone, followed by Sudden Impact, Eyeball Collector, and Ravenous Hunter. Optimal secondaries are Free Boots and Cosmic Insight. The one jungler everyone should have in their champion pool for 11.18 is Jarvan. For how strong of a pick he is right now, Jarvan's ban rate isn't excessively high, so you're able to spam him in most games. Jarvan's rise to the top of the jungle meta is all thanks to a couple direct buffs from 11.17. Build of Gore Drinker into Sterics is also extremely potent right now, which provides Jarvan along with many other bruisers a lot of strength. If you enjoy playing junglers who can make a massive impact early on, then siding with Jarvan instead of a Moomoo or Echo is what we would recommend. Level 2 and level 3 ganks are both viable options on Jarvan, which means the enemy has to respect you and play further back or else you'll snowball very quickly. Shin Zhao can be annoying to play into as his ultimate does a good job at countering your hard engage, so banning him out is a great idea. The best rune page for Jarvan is Conqueror with Triumph, Alacrity, and Coup de Gras. Run Inspiration Secondary, opting for Magical Footwear and Cosmic Insight. Alright, just before we get into mid lane, what are your initial thoughts on the new champion Vex? We're definitely looking forward to this one as the goth kind of style is something different that we haven't seen yet. Who knows how broken this champ will turn out, but the design definitely looks interesting. So let us know what you guys think of Vex down in the comments below. Heading over to the mid lane, a new addition to our top 3, thanks to some insane buffs this patch, is Talia. What's not to like about some mana refund on Q, a smaller worked ground radius, and a whole 20 seconds off worked ground duration? These buffs will open up so many more opportunities for Talia in the laning phase, leading to more kills, a faster snowball, and then spreading your lead like wildfire once you hit 6. Talia's shove and roam potential allows her to excel in the solo queue environment as being active around the map is key to your success as a mid laner. Of course, no matter what mage you pick at the moment, you'll run into some issues against assassins. To alleviate this, we would recommend using your ban on Katarina, Zed, or Ukshin as they are highly picked champs who can give you the most issues. For the core build, Russia Luden's Tempest into Zanya's and Rabadon's third, you've got options in regards to the Keystone rune as Electrocute and Dark Harvest each have a place. It really comes down to whether you want more early game kill pressure, in which case run Electro, or if you want the scaling and skirmish potential of Dark Harvest. A few weeks have now passed since Ukshin's release, and as per most recent champion editions, Ukshin is looking super broken. As more players begin to dial in on the best setups and how to pilot the champ optimally, we are seeing how powerful he actually is. Long range pick potential from E and the fact it resets on champion takedowns is the ultimate solo carry tool. Your ability to clean up teamfights and continue chasing for days will leave the enemy with nowhere to run once you're ahead. Yasuo and Aurelia are two of Ukshin's more difficult meta matchups, so they are ban worthy in 11.18. We just covered in our recent video that most Uction one tricks have transitioned over to spamming Immortal Shield Bow with amazing results. Shield Bow into Wit's End and Rage Blade is a monster build right now that gives you the perfect mix of tankiness and damage. Kraken variant builds are also super solid, it just depends on preference and what kind of comp you're playing into. Rune Page is a lot less diverse as you'll run press the attack every single game with Presence of Mind, Bloodline, and Coup de Gras. Grab Shield Bash and Bone Plating for secondaries. A staple in our mid lane top 3 for a good couple weeks has been Katarina, and she locks down the 3rd spot in 11.18. Kat offers exactly what you want in a good solo queue hard carry. Surviving the first couple levels is the most difficult part, but from then on out, your kill pressure and ability to run away with the game is huge. Sacking a couple minions on the first few waves is completely fine, as all it takes is that one kill to start popping off. Once you obtain an early advantage, look to punish the enemy for playing over aggressive. Take them down a few more times and spread your advantage to other lanes. 
Teleport with Ignite allows you to keep that early kill potential while still being able to impact the map, which is really nice. Cassidyn is one of Cat's more difficult lanes in the current meta, so if you're searching for ban, he's who we would recommend. Builds for Cat are all over the place right now, as you can run about three different setups and have success with them all. Nashers is a standard rush option, while second item can be Rocket Belt, Riftmaker, or Ludens. Each has their own little niche and are all great options, so try them out to see which fits your style the best. Conqueror and Electrocute are viable rune choices. It comes down to whether you prefer the extra upfront burst of Electro or more sustained power from Conk. Draven is ready to take over in 11.18 as the massive ultimate buff will push him over the edge. R will now execute the enemy if their current health is below Draven's passive stat count. Level 6 all in power with a good aggressive support will be unbeatable if you farmed up a mass amount of stacks. With other marksmen like Ash, Varus, and Aphelios dropping down, it's time for Draven to take full control of the spotlight. Since Draven wants to be able to play super aggro, banning out one of Ezreal, Ash, or Kate are great options as their long range can make it difficult for you to trade. A strategy we may see many Dravens look to implement is farming as much passive stacks as possible and then striking as soon as they hit level 6. You'll now have a near guaranteed kill, so the enemy bot lane will have to respect that, and if you can set a freeze, you'll be able to deny the enemy and grow your lead exponentially. Standard core build for Draven is Immortal Shield Bow Rush into the Collector 2nd and Infinity Edge 3rd, run Halo Blades as the Keystone with Taste of Blood, Eyeball Collector, and Ravenous Hunter, Presence of Mind and Bloodline work great for secondaries. Jin has quietly made his way back up the solo queue tier list and is a top 3 carry pick in our books for 11.18. The utility Jin provides allows you to be useful no matter how ahead or behind you are, which makes him a very consistent pick. The fact Jin was just directly buffed and reaps benefits from fleet changes last patch have led to him leapfrogging past many ADCs in priority. Jin is even a pick who can abuse the recently buffed Ghostblade as it's becoming a very popular rush option over in Korea. Ghostblade into Gale Force and Fire Cannon is such a disgusting build as it provides you with a ton of mobility and great damage potential too. After all, one of Jin's main weaknesses is not having a gap closer, so having access to items that keep him extremely mobile is perfect. For runes, grab Dark Harvest if you want more damage and Fleet if you value the extra kiting power. If you're rushing Ghostblade, then you'll already have nice kiting ability, so opting for Dark Harvest in that case is more optimal. And the final pick to round out our top 3 for bot lane is Ziggs. Ziggs has been a very reliable option for many patches now and continues to be a valuable addition to your champion pool. Ziggs is super strong in general right now, but will save so many different team comps where your top and mid both want to play AD. AD mids won't be getting any less popular for 11.18 as Yone is buffed, Uction is rising in popularity, while Zed and Yasuo are picked a ton. The long range poke and wave clear from Q, combined with running teleport as your secondary summoner spell, makes your early laning very safe. In more difficult lanes, you can sit back and farm without being punished, while with a lead, you can demolish the enemy's tower with your passive procs and W. Sample core build is Leandri's rush into Demonic Embrace second and Zhonya's third. Take Comet with Mana Flow, Transcendence, and Scorch for primary runes. Free Boots and Biscuits work extremely well for secondaries. One support who's absolutely loving some recent indirect buffs and as a result shifts into our top three is Pike. Ghostblade buffs from 11.17 followed up by Umbral Glaive buffs in 11.18 are the recipe for Pike's rise in power. Rushing an Umbral Glaive into Ghostblade second will offer such great carry potential as you'll be zooming around the map with insane vision control. Draven coming back into meta along with Ash and Jin being played a ton is exactly what Pike wants. Being able to play with marksmen who can follow up on hook plays makes snowballing the early game so much easier. Play around bush control early on and fish for hooks when the enemy is going for last hits. Rushing early mobility boots is a great idea to look for roam plays whenever you're coming off a recall or have lane priority. Core build we would recommend is Umbral Glaive into Ghost Blade and Dusk Blade 3rd. For runes, pick up Halo Blades with Cheap Shot, Zombie Ward, and Ultimate Hunter. Secondaries are Bone Plating and Unflinching. Another amazing hook champion who's even stronger than Pike in the current meta is Blitzcrank. Blitz is on a whole nother level right now thanks to his buffs from a few patches back. Very similar to Pike, if you can obtain early brush control and force the enemy to waste a ward in the lane bush, then it opens up such free ganks for your jungler. If the enemy bot doesn't have the river warded, your jungler can walk right on in, you can flash E to get the guaranteed knockup followed by hook, and begin taking over the game from then on out. Rush early mobility boots and look for opportunities around the map if your ADC is in base or you have the shove in lane. 
As you reach mid-game, play for vision control around objectives and be ready for picks when the enemy has to face check into you. Core build for Blitz is Shirelia's or Locket Rush into Zeke's second and Knight's Vow third. Guardian is Blitzcrank's best keystone with Font of Life, Bone Plating, and Unflinching. Pick up Biscuits and Cosmic Insight for secondaries. Final champion to round out the top three for 11.18 is the best scaling support you can play being Sona. You don't have the same kind of early snowball power as Blitz or Pike, but post 20 minutes and at two items, your solo carry potential is better than 99% of supports. Passive now granting haste for hitting abilities allows you to spike super hard in the mid game, spam out heals and speed boosts, giving the enemy no chance in an extended fight. Not only do you have the utility to keep your team alive, but the playmaking ability from ult lets you take matters into your own hands and find those game winning picks. Moonstone and Shirelia's are both viable rush items, however we would definitely side with Shirelia's as it offers more raw carry power from the active. For the rune page, run Summon Airy with Mana Flow, Transcendence, and Gathering Storm. Presence of Mind and Cut Down are amazing for secondaries. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little bit more about Skill Capped. So, we offer a 5 division rank up guarantee, and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we were able to produce by far the largest catalog of premium league guides on the internet. We add over 20 videos a week. With over 1,600 guides curated into over 100 courses, no one can compare. We've also sent challenger players into ELO Hell 714 times and counting, where they commentate how to carry live. They also respond to all questions asked. Sign up today for as little as $4.99 a month if you are serious about improving. So that wraps up everything for our top three solo carry picks of 11.18. Thanks so much for watching, everyone, and we'll see you back soon.